Chavis Bryant will be working this fall after all. The Steelers receiver, who is banned for 2016, as you know, due to multiple offenses of the NFL drug policy, will spend the year training in Henderson, Nevada, and he's going to volunteer coach the wide receivers on a local high school football team. This according to his agent, Stephen A., do you like, love, or hate Bryant coaching high school football? I hate it. Really? I don't like it at all. Um, <clears throat> again, I'm a man about second chances. I don't think this guy should be banned from the NFL. I don't think we should hate him or anything like that. Or, that's not where I'm going. What I'm saying is, is that if I am the parent of a kid, while in most situations we would like to, we think that it's great for you to be exposed to somebody who's going through the trials and tribulations, can speak directly to the pitfalls you need to avoid, et cetera, et cetera. That's after they've succeeded in overcoming their own ailments, addictions, or whatever the case may be. This dude is in the midst of, in, of, of a one-year, full-season-long suspension for violating the league's drug program. This is in the aftermath of being suspended for games, four games in 2015 for drug violations. This is in the aftermath of going to John Lucas in Houston, trying to get himself rehabilitated. On several occasions, this man has been warned and he has been penalized, and he still has not been able to discipline himself enough to remain in the NFL, and yet you're going to go around kids, what the hell are you going to teach them? How to puff and pass? I don't want to hear that. I don't want to see that. As far as I'm concerned, show me that you have the discipline necessary to do the right things before you're exposed to kids where you're teaching them what? He can definitely teach them the game of football. Martavis Bryant is a big-time quarterback. And I'll even confess. Well, I wish uh, wide, him, out, wide out, wide out, wide out. Yeah. Wide out, I'm sorry, wide out, I apologize. Wide out. He's big time. He's big time. The number two, an elite number two option. And I will confess that I'm a bit emotional about this because I'm a diehard Steelers fan. Yeah. And I believe that if Martavis Bryant were healthy and on the Steelers roster, they would be going to the Super Bowl this year. I think they would be a virtual lock to pull it off, despite their question marks on the defensive side of the ball, because offensively, they're that elite. So I am pretty peeved. I am pretty ticked off that this dude finds himself suspended for the year. And I'll openly confess that that might shade my judgment just a touch, but just a touch. Principally speaking, I have no problem with him being around the kids. I have a problem with the timing. You haven't proven that you're worthy enough to be around kids, teaching them how to act. You're not just coaching. You know how kids are. You can go there and counsel them and talk to them about football, but because of your greatness as a talent and your stature as a star in the NFL, they're going to walk off that field and come talk to you and lean on you for guidance counseling, wisdom, etc., because that's the way it works with aspiring athletes. And what the hell are you going to do then? What are you in position to do then? I don't like this one bit. If this were a year or two from now, yes. Right now, while in the throes of this suspension, he has no business around high school kids. I totally disagree. I love this. What else is this guy supposed to do that's more constructive? Uh, first of all, he keeps getting suspended, as I keep bringing up, because the NFL has an antiquated drug testing policy. They choose to test for marijuana. They take money from alcohol companies. They advertise beer on TV. Worse for you than marijuana, according to all the studies, societal impact I'm talking about, for sure. I find it hypocritical that they test, as I apparently I say every day, because this keeps coming up with issues with players. It's hypocritical of them to choose to test for marijuana. I don't want to hear about, well, one's legal, one's illegal. The, uh, the, the fact that prohibition remained against marijuana when it ended against alcohol was an outrageous political fact of the time. I don't want to get into it right now. Anyway, the guy's suspended for a year. You know what he knows how to do better than anything else? Play football. You know what he's going to do with his time? Teach kids to play football. I, I mean, like, look, I, Snoop has a past. Snoop famously would not pass an NFL drug test. And Snoop is involved with youth football at various points in his life. And, and uh, if my kid, as long as they're not driving a car or something, if my kid was a, was a little football player and Snoop wanted to, wanted to show him some stuff, I, I, I'd be fine with that. I don't see why Martavis Bryant's different. As somebody 
who knows Snoop, who has spoken to Snoop on many occasions, I promise you that Snoop Dogg, despite what he does, would not condone those players doing it. Let you me think tell you, Martavis Bryant uh, would? No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying to you is Snoop would sit there and say to them, as archaic, as draconian as these rules are, these are the rules. Don't mess yourself up by getting yourself involved what in this situation. You, what makes you think that Martavis Bryant would be like, hey, don't do what I did? I'm, I'm not I would saying, assume I'm, that would I, be his I position. I absolutely believe he would do it. I'm just saying it would have more cachet coming from somebody like Snoop because Snoop wasn't stupid enough to get himself suspended and cost gonna, himself money. I am not That's gonna the be, point. I am not going to be mad at a guy who wants I'm not to mad spend at him. Who wants to spend I'm his not mad at him. Who wants to spend I'm saying his in high time school. I'm saying doing high what school he should. knows best. No, no, I don't blame high him. school kids. He, Martavis Bryant, is doing the right thing for himself. I'm saying if I'm that high school, I wouldn't want him doing it. I'm saying if I'm them, not him, he's not doing nah, it. I take him wrong. I'm the principal of the high school. Come on, Martavis. I, I, I got a top flight NFL talent Hell coaching no. my kids. Hell sure. no. I don't think Hell so. Hey, Martavis, will you so tell sure. him to stay off I don't drugs? Think yes, we agree okay, on come on. This subject. Yes, I am. All right, we're moving on. Coming up, should the reigning two time MVP actually, I'm lying. That's not what we're doing next. More first take after the break. Stay here. By the way, why are you looking down? Who are you talking to when you're looking at the glass? Me? Ah. Okay, all right, that's it. You done. <laughs> I didn't know flogging was a training method. Built like a brick house. There's no way that hurts you. Ass pack, yeah. It works. Preps you for the pain. Mm -hmm. You should look into taking up paddle boarding or something. What's Cephas say? Well, he claims his hands are tied. Things seem really f***ed up over there. Tell me about it. I can't even get a call about OTAs. My deal's already set. Lack of gratitude speaks volumes about a man. So listen to this story. Our next guest was named after John David Crow, the great St. Louis running back. His father, I did my homework, yeah. Denzel Washington, had a premonition because his son went on to become Morehouse College's all-time leading rusher in 2006. He was signed to the St. Louis Rams as a free agent. And now, such a cool story, <laughs> he plays a football player on the hit show HBO Ballers, John David Washington in the house. Thanks Thank you so me. much. Thank you, man. Thank you, Thank you for that. being here. You do a fantastic job on that show in that role. It seems like we just saw a clip, obviously. Great yeah. cast. You guys have a lot of fun. What is the best part of being on Ballers? Um, besides the camaraderie of the cast and crew and uh, the city, you know, that they've ingratiated us in, 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 the, in this, in, the, in filming, you know, and, and it's really one of the main characters, I believe, the city of Miami itself. And, uh, and they're very supportive and, and um, it's just been, it's been a, lo a lot of fun filming all over the place in it's Miami. It's a good city. Yeah. Look, it looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> it's good times. Looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> good times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Good, clean yeah. family yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Miami. Oh, Restaurants, museums. It, yeah. it comes across on the screen. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're right, it's a character. You want to you be watching the show even if it's just for weather porn. You, you know, don't. like whatever it is. <laughs> you want to be watching the show. Um, so, so you're working out with the ride. You know, you're in his kind of... Uh, area in his vicinity and this dude is jacked yeah. up and in shape yeah. and you're going to be doing stuff you know from time to time that shows off your physique does that put extra pressure on you to make sure that you you know are jacked up like the rock no nah, not at all actually it's way more fun training to look like i can play ball instead of when i was actually playing ball play, you know, being a, a trainer for television so uh no it's no extra pressure i get to I don't have to lift as heavy. I can do higher reps, you know, lower weight. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun getting ready physically for this character. Talk to me about the show itself. I mean, you know, I've watched it. Obviously, you're doing a fantastic job. I'm a fan of Dwayne Johnson because I was a wrestler fan. I used to watch him as The Rock oh, a right, lot right. and all of that stuff. You know, and he's I love Rick him. on General Hospital. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so he's got some acting skills. Oh, he can relate. Oh, look no, at you. No, you no, got your sad card? I, 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 yes, I do. All right. Yes, I do. Yes, I do, actually. Us actors got to stick together. Us lesbians. Well, check it out. Um, looking at ballers, <laughs> yeah. I want you to talk to me about the show itself and the kind because I think every show, particularly a show like that in this day and age, is trying to send a message mm -hmm. through the various stories that it tells. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, what is the theme of this show and what do you think makes the show so successful thus far? Um, I, I think, especially my approach to this Ricky character, is a chance to, to show human beings you know, go through real things. I mean, they do super ordinary, super ordinary things on Sunday, Monday nights, on you know, playing ball, and, and but they're, reg they're regular people, you know, and, and they feel and they hurt and they have to make certain decisions that affect their family and loved ones on a daily basis. So just to kind of get a, a snapshot of that and, and see the, uh, you know, the, the different uh, and various, um, you know, situations that these players are put in when they come into big money. I mean, their life changes mm -hmm. automatically, like instantaneously, 
right at the draft and after the draft. Life changes. And so th those kinds of responsibilities that are getting put on these young men that don't really have, they're really getting a crash course in learning on the fly with millions, it's, it's, it's a lot of pressure. Who's telling these stories more? You, The Rock? Others, because obviously y'all have the kind of background where y'all can speak to those kind of things. Hmm. What about others on the staff? Uh, wait, wait, so you mean... And I'm just talking about, I know the producers obviously have a role, I know they have a very yeah. big role in formulating the storylines. Right. But how much input do y'all have? With well, I you? believe that's, the, that's the, the teamwork part of this production. I mean, the, the producers to the writers and they give it to the actors. And the actors bring certain qualities and realness and authenticity to the uh, to every character, and that, that's why chemistry is such a big deal. I mean, you guys have it here, you know. And, and once you start flowing together with the words that are coming off of the page, you make it your own, you know. And, and the team concept. So I believe Dwayne wanted to, it's really close to his art because he's transitioned beautifully from a athlete, you know, uh, to yeah, to actor yes. to another to another um, occupation. And so it's, it's, this role for him in particular is very close. Gotcha. You know, it's close to home. And a lot of times that's harder to play, too. I'm, I'm sure you get this all the time because Denzel Washington's son, you can act. I mean, you are a talented actor. Yes, you are. I, I, I thought that before I knew you were, I think Michelle Beale or Marcellus Wiley said, oh, yeah, that's Denzel Washington's son. Oh, yeah, okay, I get it. But, yeah, yeah. but you can act. All-time leading rusher at Morehouse. You even, to get to, you, you even get to play out the fantasy of playing in the NFL through ballers. I, I'm sure it has, but has anything bad ever happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, listen. Uh, girls I, all I, like I, you. I, I hear that all the time. I, mean, right I, I, I sabotage many relationships up through the paranoia of trust issues or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, I'm very blessed. I'm a lucky, lucky individual to have two functional, functional, active parents in my life and uh, and and big time supporters of. Me. Ever get a paper cut? <laughs> I mean, you listen. I, I, I have a broken clavicle, <laughs> couple, jinx this concussions. Right, right. You know. Yeah, a girl ever break up with you? Uh, yeah, sure. All right, all right. I feel a little <laughs> bit better. No, no. Can we move on? It's a lie. Yeah. Can we move and it's on? a lie. <clears throat> yeah, 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 I got you. I got you. Um, acting, football, which one was your passion? Uh, well, I guess both, really. Uh, acting, I wanted to do my entire life. I saw my father do Othello, Shakespeare in the Park, when I was what, five, mm -hmm. and I fell in love with the language. And uh, I just kind of, I was reluctant. My reluctance stemmed from my relationship, you know, and nepotism in the business. And so I used my, I guess, my rebellious quest, surge, crusade, I used football for that because it gave me my sense of identity, my identity card. And I earned my own scholarship. You know, I paid for my way through school. And uh, I got the respect from teammates, from coaches, on my own merit, through hard work and, uh, and results on the football field. And those kinds of um, lessons I learned Especially in the business, the, the, the business of the NFL. Curtis Martin told me the hardest part about the NFL isn't playing, it's everything else. And I didn't understand that at first. He told me when I was still in school. And I realized later when I got there, all the distractions and what you have to deal with. Again, that's what our show really hits home with, especially with my character. All the distractions surrounding. It's almost like your sanctuary. When you get to get to the field or get to mm -hmm. the facility, it's like, whew, now I can just do what I've been doing since I was five years old. What do you say when you look at today's NFL players. Some of the issues, fair or not, that a po just an abundance of them find themselves getting into. I mean, whether it's you, whether it's Dwayne Johnson or anybody else, what do you say to guys that are blessed enough to be in the NFL today about what they need to do to avoid some of those pitfalls? Whether it's through the show or just talking here right now, what do you say to them? Well, um, I think the word that comes to mind is Humility. I think if you can humble yourself and realize all the work that you've done to get to this point, so why would you blow it on a, you know, a couple of decisions you know, that, that can blow everything you've worked for? Um, so to appreciate where you are, I think it takes humility, in my opinion. And that's what the character is dealing with this, this season. Discernment is another word. You know, mm -hmm. really, how do I set myself up? after ball. And, and you know, listen, I, I, I bought a flat screen TV with my first NFL paycheck and I felt like I was stupid I, and I'm pretty good with my money. But that's what happens. And when you wanted to be there, I wanted that job since I was five years old. I don't know if y'all have dreamt about being on this mm -hmm. stage since y'all were five, but it does something to your psyche. It does something to your emo emotionally when you get that call. So, you know, emotions run high and sometimes, you know, and you're young as well. So um, I'd say be responsible. And to be responsible, you got to be humble and understand where you are, you know, in life and how many kids look up to you. Because you were that kid once looking up to the Randall Cunninghams of the world and the Emmett Smiths of the world.
Had to get Cunningham in there. Had to, baby. Y'all were killing them earlier, man. Y'all were killing them. I'm telling Eagles, you, man. we were killing the Chip Kelly Eagles, yeah, yeah, not the yeah. Eagles prior to that. You talk about Randall Cunningham. Was that under Buddy Ryan? It's just the laundry. Uh, it's just yeah, the same well, laundry. It's not the same yeah. players. Is that, yeah, right. Yeah, same laundry. Yeah, but it's the it's the culture, man. I'm I'm a diehard, and my dad, my father's a Dallas fan, Dallas Cowboys. Oh God, you're, you're all on the, the NFC East. Both guys walk. Giants. How was Please. that? But you were rebellious. Yeah, Cowboys. yeah. You see, Cowboys, yeah, by nature. Was, oh, but on. when I saw when I saw Randall take off, man, with them strides, I was like, I, I want to be that. Yeah, I gotta do it, and I stopped growing, so I couldn't. Well, I got love. I got love for your dad, but damn, I didn't know he was a Dallas guy. Yeah, you didn't know that? I have to. I did not know that. Oh, I have yeah, to change man. my thinking. Oh, about boy, him right yeah, yeah, Dallas like, Cowboys. Oh, listen, nobody's perfect. Oh, wow, wow. You know, John you David, thank you so much for being here with Congrats, us. And discernment and humility—that's powerful. And we'll also be seeing you on the big screen coming up pretty soon too. We can't, we can't wait for thank that. You. Thank you so much thank for the time. We appreciate you.